My name is Jory Martinez. And I am Mercedes Key. And today we are discussing a mysterious disappearance in 1971 that was finally resolved in 2013. Two 17-year-old high school students, Pamela Jackson and Cheryl Miller, were on their way to a party when they suddenly went missing in 1971 in South Dakota. If this were to happen today, we would have Amber Alerts and Internet to help track them. But in 1971, there were no Amber Alerts, Internet just to touch away on a cell phone, or raiders that could help locate the girls after the time they had disappeared. At the time, a 21-year-old Clay County Deputy Sheriff in 1971 said, Back then, if a kid turned up missing, it was actually was far more likely that they were a runaway. It just wasn't something you were concerned about in rural South Dakota. During those 42 years, there have been multiple misleading investigations that caused a lot of pain to the family. One theory about their disappearance was that the two girls were runaways because of their ages, but their families confirmed that they were not the runaway types. Another theory was that they accidentally drove their car into the Missouri River, and the river was searched many times, but no car was found. Investigators tied their disappearance to a serial rapist, David Licken, who lived a few miles down from the girl's intended destination. He is now a South Dakota State Penitentiary inmate, serving 225 years for rape and kidnapping. Detectives interviewed many of Licken's rape victims and his younger sister. In a second interview with his sister, she recalls seeing a car on their family farm in 1971. When detectives showed her a picture of different makes of Stubb Baker vehicles, she pointed to a Stubb Baker Lark, which was the same car Cheryl and Pamela were last seen in. She said she saw Cheryl lying on the steering wheel and Pam with her head on the passenger window. This is what led to the first search on the Lincoln Farm in 2004, but no vehicle was found. Later that year, her psychiatrist suggested giving her a hypnosis so that she would provide more information. During a videotape hypnotherapy session, she remembered pulling a tarp that covered a wheelbarrow and saw the bodies of the two girls, and the bodies disappeared shortly after that. Another interview with her in November 2004, without the hypnosis, she described that Pamela was wearing a dark shirt with red stripes and Cheryl's shirt with a white collar. She also said she saw bits of red and dark colored feet on the cow feeding trough, which led to another investigation where, again, no vehicle was found. The discovery of a Bible with strands of hair inside led to another investigation when an inmate named Olysseus Black Crow told investigators that Lincoln had confessed to killing the girls. Black Crow was fitted with a wire and sent back into the penitentiary to interview Lincoln. He returned an audio recording of a conversation allegedly with Lincoln in which the rapist described convincing the girls to give him a ride to his farm, raping Jackson, then tying Miller up for six hours. The recording also had another inmate talking about clippings of hair he kept in the Bible and saying that he and Kerwin, who was Lincoln's brother, drove to Lincoln, Nebraska to dispose the car. The indictment charging Lincoln with first-degree murder was dismissed after learning that Black Crow had conspired with another inmate to create false tapes, and he admitted to those tapes in 2008. After 42 years, this cold case was finally closed in September 2013 when the car was found. In 2013, there was a wet, rainy spring followed by strong creek currents. Eventually, there was a drought which caused the car to become visible, which was caked in mud when it was recovered. A bystander noticed the tire sticking out of the water and notified police. Their 1960 Stubb Baker Lark's ignition and headlights were still on, and none of their belongings were missing. In the car, authorities found their clothing that contained bones, personal belongings, two classmate notes, and Miller's purse. One of the tires was damaged, suggesting that they might have been victims of a blowout as they crossed a bridge that was still under construction in 1971. The South Dakota Attorney General, Marty Jackley, stated, To start with, the forensic pathology and anthropology reports indicate that there's no type of injury that would be consistent with or caused by foul play or inappropriate conduct. The DNA confirmed the identities of the two sets of remains found in the car and also concluded that the girls' deaths were accidental. The Sioux City Journal adds that the car did not contain any evidence, such as cans or bottles, that alcohol was involved. Unfortunately, Jackson's father died five days before the car was found. 
Thank you all for listening to the mysterious story and be sure to check out more upcoming segments on Bravescast.